Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. I got a question for you. Do you want to be successful? And I'm also mentioning success in your own definition of the word of success. So what it means to you to be a success. I'm going to tell you one thing. Your belief system is the number one factor to your success. What you believe about yourself, your ability, what you believe about what you're capable of is what is going to determine your success. And remember, we are defining success in your own definition of success. So if you have limiting beliefs or if you have untold or unwarranted or unproven excuses that you believe about yourself or about the environment or about the economy that will determine your activity and your output and we've all heard the saying you are what you think Right. So what you think about your market, what you think about your message, what you think about the media will determine how far you're willing to go um, and make your business profitable and enjoyable. But like I said, we've heard the saying, you are what you think. But are we really? Do you ever question things like that? Because you may be surprised to know that the answer to this question is, well, Yes, whether you realize it or not, we are the products of our own thoughts. What you think about is what you become. So you want to be guarding your inputs because diet doesn't pertain to what you just eat. It's what you feed your mind, what you allow your eyes to see, and what you allow yourself to believe with regards to the environment in which you're going to be working and the world that you see around you. So in order for you to make sense of the world around you, you need to perfect your belief system. And the life you're living right now, whether it's good or bad, whether you're putting out your consulting, your training, your information, your expertise, whether you're being invited to do uh, speaking gigs, whether you are sacrificing your income just to do what you love. Let me tell you something. You can have both, but it's only your belief system that allows you to. So the life you're living right now, whether it's good or bad, you attracted it to yourself by the choices that you make. Right, I'll tell you exactly what's happening right now. You made a choice to subscribe to this podcast. That's why you're hearing this podcast today. You made a choice to buy that phone or those headphones. If you hadn't bought those things, you wouldn't be able to listen to me broadcasting at this particular moment. So I'm sure at this point you might be thinking, why would I attract failure or negativity to my life? Well, let me tell you something. We sometimes unconsciously do just pretty much because of the way we feel about what's happening around us and our feelings are predicated on our belief system. So if you get that right, let me tell you something, your business will be profitable and enjoyable. So let's uh, delve into one aspect right now, which is the power of thought. Okay. Now, Failure and success are all dependent on what we actually feed our minds, like I mentioned earlier on. So particularly your subconscious mind. Right now, your little toe on your left foot is pumping blood vigorously, but you had not put attention and awareness to it up until I mentioned it. Can you imagine how many other things are happening around you in your body or just 
in the world without you paying particular attention to them. And they're happening at a subconscious level in such a way that you've taken a breath in and you're taking a breath out, maybe without you having thought about it. So failure and success are all dependent on what we're actually feeding our minds, particularly our subconscious minds. And if you're failing in one area of your life, chances are it might be because of the barriers that you've placed upon your mind relating to that area of your life in question. You see, when I first arrived in Australia, I knew no one. You know, I had nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. And I somewhat in my brain, I knew that no matter where I was going to start from, I was not going to, where I was, was just temporary. So that belief system in and of itself got me to climb the ranks of, you know, the modeling industry, which I did, you know, and reach out to the now 450 businesses that we've worked with. You know what I mean? All of that was predicated on a belief system that I was not going to end up where I had started. You see, when I was born in a small town in Africa, you know, growing up was pretty tough. You know, we didn't have a lot of money or hope. And I didn't even think I was going to amount to anything. But there was one thing that changed the course of my life was because I had what I now reference as an anchor point or an anchor person that showed me that life can be different and incredible depending on what it is that you focus on. So I had a teacher coming in who changed the course of my life um, when I was um, a teenager. And ever since then, I have seen a world with infinite possibilities for people who dream big and have the courage to follow their dreams. Now, that's the mindset that I now have. So if you find yourself failing in an area of life, chances are it's because you might have erected some barriers that you might not know that your brain is battling with. All right. Some people already grew up telling themselves that being rich or having money or being wealthy um, is wrong or money is the root of all evil. And you find yourself finding it difficult to actually uh, grow a prosperous business because you don't want to be painted with the same brush of being evil. You know, and one of this, uh, one one other example of this is salespeople, entrepreneurs who aspire to get up to maybe six or seven figures within their business or earn hundreds and thousands of dollars in commission, but instead they end up failing miserably just simply because of the belief system they have around money. All right, so don't let your results um, or failure detect your course of action. Now, when an individual is maybe failing and some people might be actually succeeding because that's the definition that they've given upon themselves. No one ever fails. Everyone is succeeding. It's only that they haven't aimed high enough for them to actually break barriers or boundaries. Everyone is actually succeeding at whatever it is that they're doing. A plant in and of itself, never sets out to be a failure. It grows to whatever is given to it in terms of sunlight, uh, fertilizer, and environment. Same as human beings, we all grow into that which we deem is comfortable for our own sake. If you don't have anchor points or role models or people that can show you that certain things can be done, you're not a, a failure. It's just the standard by which the humans around you are measuring you against, all right? So when an individual is maybe failing, and I say this with utmost love and respect, maybe you're an entrepreneur or a salesperson, um, sometimes they propel themselves further into a negative mindset just simply because of the people that are around them. And they actually enable the thoughts of failure and lack to consume them. And every moment that you're in lack or you're, you're in woe is me, you are actually creating that um, environment where your brain starts feeding on negativity. 
And the more you continue doing this, the more the seeds of doubt and failure actually grow in your mind. And it actually stops you from achieving real success. Let me tell you something. As children, we are programmed to let maybe our report cards or the little ribbons that we win at school detect the level of our success. And kids these days where everyone is a winner, they never know the difference when they actually come into real life where there's actually winning and losing and they can't handle that pressure. So when we then transition to adulthood, we use the same maybe system to access our level of success by analyzing the results that we're getting alongside the results of other people. Have you ever noticed that nobody compares their company to their contemporaries? They compare their business to Amazon. They compare their business to Facebook. They compare their business to Zoom. When they started, they were also not as successful as they are today. So why don't you find people that are you know, uh, operating at the same level as you and see what it is that they're doing differently. And this will help you to reprogram your failure because maybe you are comparing yourself against things that are unattainable. You can't compare yourself to Apple. You're not Steve Jobs. So it's very important to understand that failure in life is inevitable. Okay, we, we, we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And the more we learn, the more we realize how we can better our lives. And it doesn't matter who you are or how much money you have. There's not one person in the world who has not met with any failure at some point or another. You know, Steve Jobs was adopted and he even got fired from a company that he helped to create. But what makes someone successful and another one continuously fail and eventually become um, maybe destitute is simply because of your own belief system. You know, maybe it's a belief that you hold about yourself or about the economy or about the industry that you're in or about your own self-worth. You know? Maybe you're going through a challenging or difficult time or you've gone through COVID or certain things and it's reframed your uh, belief system about what it is happening, whether it's work-related or personal um, experiences. Let me tell you something. For each person who gets up and dusts themselves off, there's another who chooses to wallow in their failures. And if they have people that can listen to them, wow, that's a pity party happening there. And do not be um, angry that you have no invitation to pity parties because you don't need to be there. Because who you think you are each day completely determines the universe that you actually live in. We went through the hardest time in COVID. And let me tell you something. I was um, awarded the um, you know networker of the year in a time when everybody else was uh, hiding in their, sh in their shells. All right. I decided not to make COVID, um, you know, the year that it was. I decided to reach out and connect with people and I even started advertising fully and I just decided, you know what, I'm not just going to sit in my home office and not do anything. I even started my podcast then. Yes, I know it was a difficult time, but you know what I did? I acknowledged those emotions and I didn't let them control my destiny because thoughts and ideas on their own are not what, you know, um, are uh, not what makes a person stay in a negative mindset. You know, rather it's the intense emotions that we then associate these ideas and thoughts that keep us in a state of misery. When we associate strong emotions with a, with a thought or an idea, it becomes a belief. And when these beliefs, um, you know, formulate a pattern, it starts to control how we actually react and act towards various situations. So for you to overcome maybe negative belief systems, we need to first acknowledge the emotions and then learn to shift from those negative emotions into positive experiences. You know, for example, if you're a coach or a consultant, you might say to yourself, why is everyone making thousands of sales per month when I can't even make one single sale? Am I a failure? 
you know, from this example, you can see that the 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 individual coach or consultant in question is not actually thinking in a success mindset or an abundance mindset because what one person has does not affect what you can have too. But they're just in you know focusing on the lack of success, which is not enabling them to actually go out and reach out to um, you know the people that they're uh, trying to sell to. You know when you're selling to people, they can actually sense your energy or your emotion level, and then they reciprocate that. So if you're already defeated, people are obviously going to give that back to you. It's called reciprocity. So maybe it's a time for you to start changing. You know, for a person to override your current system, m m first of all, you need to change your environment. Like I said, when I grew up, you know, we didn't have a lot of money or hope, and I wouldn't, and and I know, I knew I I wouldn't amount to anything had I stayed in that environment where I didn't have any role models. Right now, I'll probably be a grandfather. Like that's a fact. I would have had kids early, and my kids would be having kids right now, and we'll just be sitting there waiting for the government to uh, send us corn, um, you know, just so that we don't die of starvation, you know. So in order for you to succeed, you must shift and let go of your lack mentality, um, you know, to one that is ready to receive prosperity, right? And the only way to do this is through the power of maybe repetition. So if you find things that are working for you and you start creating uh, affirmations around that and, you know, telling and informing your mind what it is that you want to become, it will actually start working for you. But unfortunately, the power of repetition is not a quick fix. Just like you can't breathe once and that's all the oxygen that you need in your body. It's one that takes time and it requires ongoing commitment. Something that a lot of people don't quite have or so they think. So what do I mean about repetition? So for you to start shifting your belief system to one that focuses on maybe success and prosperity, you will need to first decide what success looks like to you. Like I mentioned earlier on, your own definition of what success really means because success varies from person to person. So it's important for you to have a deeper understanding of what you associate success with. There are seven aspects in our lives. You know, you've got your health, your wealth, you've got your relationships, um, you've got your vocation, you've got your spirituality, you've got your mindset. I don't know if I've counted out seven things. So you need to figure out which aspects are you already successful in and then work on the ones that you're not. And once you've decided on what success actually means to you, then start creating goals in terms of maybe a written statement that reminds you at any given moment what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to be. Let me tell you something. When we were growing up at school, we used to have like a 30-minute break um, in between lessons. And when the bell rings, you had to go maybe to a different class or to a different activity. And if you're caught wandering about, the headmaster would ask you, where are you supposed to be? Like, I've always taken that message with me everywhere that I go, where are you supposed to be? So when you've got that written statement, it becomes the constant reminder, you know, of where you're supposed to be or what you're supposed to be doing. It will be a benefit for you to read your success goal each and every day for at least three months. And then it brings your brain back to where you're supposed to be. That's the repetition of it all. Because you are what you think. You know? Any change in a person's belief system through repetition would actually enable them to better deal with failures and challenges as they may arise. You know? It will also assist you as a person to stay focused because when you keep looking at one thing, it, your brain starts seeking enough of the reason um, or evidence that it is actually possible for you to be doing have a happier existence. And when you focus on your goals rather than quitting as your first hur on your first hurdle, then you will manage to go through anything no matter how tough it becomes. Because if you believe 
with every cell of your body that you're going to do something, then you will actually achieve it. You know, there's uh, unspoken rules, um, you know, that um, are derived from the story of uh, Roger Bannister. You know, he created a reference point that you can run a mile within four minutes. And everybody who knew about that already and automatically started knowing that that was possible. So you can imagine, you don't need to worry about, um, you know, focusing on, on negativity when you can find a reference point. Find somebody that you can um, emulate and then just start proving to yourself that it has been done and me, uh, I too can be doing have this thing. And this will help you through um, whenever you find any hurdles, you know. And the journey may be a long one. Well, we, that's the whole point of us being here on earth to learn as many lessons as we possibly can. You know? And if and if, if, if you believe you will be able to uh, conquer anything, the journey won't, would actually be enjoyable. And you can actually achieve success if you have the desire to be persistent and have a strong belief system that is going to back you up every single time. I think it was um, Hillary, uh, Edmund Hillary. He didn't get to the top of Mount Everest the first time that he tried. But he did what no man had done before with a strong belief and a commitment for him to succeed. So the very same principles apply to you. Whether you're climbing Mount Everest or whatever you have decided your success is going to be, you need a very strong belief system. You know? Like I always keep saying, I jumped on a plane with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. You know, I'm not going to lie, it was tough at first. I was so far away from my family, my friends, and I struggled to even get regular work and pay my bills. And I was even evicted from my apartment in Richmond, which was my very lowest point. But I never gave up because the system in me had told me that no matter what I was going to do, right, no matter where I was going to be or who I was going to uh, become, I was not going to become destitute in Australia. I knew that I would succeed. I just rolled up my sleeves and I took any opportunity that presented itself my way. And that's when my big break came. You know, after one chance modeling gig uh, that was set up by one of my roommates at that time, I was signed into a modeling company. And I went on to become one of the most recognized faces in the, uh, you know, Melbourne modeling scene. And before I knew it, I was rub brushing shoulders with A-list celebrities and, and, and people at VIP parties. And I even, you know, I didn't even know that it was possible that you can say no to going to parties. Because I just wanted to spend time with people that I actually loved and cared about. And my business actually emanated um, from me doing stuff for the models that I was working with because many of the models that I met um, along the way wanted to increase their online presence. Something that I had, had had held a strong interest in. All this because of my belief system. So you are what you think. And you may be surprised to know that the answer to this question is, yeah, you are what you think. Whether it's negative or it's positive. What you think about is who you become. So I threw myself in this new line of work and I was reading everything on digital marketing that I could get my hands on. And I began working with uh, small businesses and I've helped them achieve massive growth through this newfound knowledge. And word started going about before, um, and before long, I was now working with larger companies and people that are registered in the ASX, um, you know, of Australia. Fast forward to today, my belief system has made it possible for me to partner with over 450 businesses and create over $75 million in sales revenue. And I even have an entire team of battle hardened marketing experts that work with me. You know, I've even been on TV. But all of this pales to, in comparison to the success that I've actually achieved for my clients. I've had somebody write a book and dedicate it to me, all because of my belief system. I never let it 
um i never let the fact that i wasn't born here become a hindrance for me to achieve success so now it's your turn I want you to discover how you can actually grow your service business from maybe 200k to 2 million in two years. And I can help you do that. You know, you're already successful. Maybe you're just not defining it well. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.